I here deliver my last will and testament, which is roughly, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil I would not, that I do. Honestly, it shouldn't take too long because I don't have much. I've got, at this point, less than $10,000 Australian in the bank, which maybe the government will seize to pay back my university hex. So I wouldn't count on anyone seeing much of that. If there's any less that doesn't get swallowed up by admin or funeral costs, you could give it to Project Pearls, which is a charity in Manila which works with street kids in Tondo. I really admire what they do. Um, I'd give them whatever you can. Otherwise, the sum total of my assets includes my car, which sell it and use it to pay for like a tenth of the coffin, uh, and my laptop, which has all my writing on it, um, but I'm really flattering myself that anyone would want to look at a few gigabytes of half-written script ideas. Um, but if so, it's probably Jack and Chris who get that on. I'm sorry, guys. On the off chance that I die in the right way to make my work more interesting for people to produce, the same rules apply as now no one pays any rights to produce my work, no one pays any rights to publish it or reproduce it, no one makes any money off my writing, full stop. I know that that opens up a can of worms about controlling your legacy, but I genuinely don't care. I would rather my work be badly digested and vomited back into the world by a thousand hacks with bad intentions than a single barrier be erected around my writing. Anyone can share any of my plays online, any work they want, and if, anyone, if no one chooses to do that, then my work can be forgotten and that's fine. So I've been thinking a little bit about Doug Cox, the human ecologist that wrote some of the books who most influenced my work. Um, Doug passed away in 2016. He lived alone, no partner or children, and he asked that there be no eulogy at his funeral. And there's no biographical information out there about him really. Not, the only thing that exists of him in the world is his work, which is exactly what he wanted. And that legacy is interesting. For years, what I've wanted when I die was to vanish without leaving a trace. I mean, it's impossible to go without a trace, not truly, but as minimal a splash as possible. I'd like to be forgotten the day after I die, out of the world, out of people's minds, cleanly lost in time. I can't think of anything uglier than having your name stuck to some kind of worldly memorial, like having something named after you, the way that people sponsor buildings or have discoveries named after them. I mean, obviously you're gonna be remembered. You'd have to live a cold, isolated life to make no mark on the people around you. But I imagine the period leading up to my death as hopefully a time to tie up loose ends, make amends, repay debts, clean the slate, and generally get myself in a position where people can move on without me as quickly as possible. I know gravestones and digital Facebook memorials are for the living, not the dead, um, but the point is that the living shouldn't miss you, not that much. If I could, I would like to slip under the surface without a ripple. But if you're going to leave something behind, be like Doug Cox, leave behind something useful, something that helps. What will people need of you after you're gone? What will people need of me after I'm gone? What have I learned? What have I figured out that will be useful to people in the future? Well, I'll keep it to something simple. The best thing I ever wrote was in a play I wrote in 2006 called Oceans All Boiled Into Sky. There are two characters in a car driving through this hellish landscape of steam and the driver, Mac, can't get the car into third gear and he's panicking. And to encourage him, one of the passengers, Honest, tells him a story. Honest says, chill out man, no more of this freaking over third gear. You ever hear of the story of the mongoose and the two cobras? Mac says, no, I don't know that story. I'll tell you that story. I'll tell you what. There was once upon a time a field by a river and the mongoose came out of the snake hole and said, the cobra was pregnant, but I killed it anyway. And the birds sang a song in the mongoose's honor and there was peace and safety. Peace and safety. That story didn't have a beginning or a middle. We all want peace and safety. Peace, safety and peace. What's your name, Mac? The point of the story is, don't worry about the third gear. 